This week I thought uh, to do something else instead of the laser cutter. I mean everybody's expecting uh, to go for the laser cutter again. And uh, as a matter of fact uh, I'm working on, um, on, a, on a quite complex circuit for a bigger company. Um, and I'm working on it right here and one of the things I have to do is I have to uh, generate sine waves from a microcontroller which is not really easy because microcontrollers are more into square waves but anyway I, I, I succeeded at that but then there's the next thing I need to synchronize um, the, the sine wave to an external pulse that I get from some other device and uh, as you can see here on the scope maybe it's working out quite nice but the um, let me zoom in there just for you guys to see a bit better here we go but see it's working quite okay but the thing is that the pulses that you see there are actually not from an external device but from the device itself and it was quite annoying to do that because um, this microcontroller is already working its its ass off to do all the sine wave thingies and communications and now it needs to generate a pulse for itself and you can see that uh, sometimes it just doesn't work and um, it goes out of phase and also let me see if I can zoom in a bit more the pulses that you see here for instance is not always the same time it's fluctuating and that's because the microcontroller is actually busy doing other stuff so it gets interrupted from the pulses and uh, what's well, not ideal and um, as you guys might know, I always like the the one you know the one uh, day projects, something I make up in the morning and have can have finished in the evening. One of the examples was um, this box. So that's nice to have, you know, these little yeah like utilities. It's like it's always good to have like a multimeter and some potential meters and a scope. But the thing that I'm actually missing in this situation that I'm doing right now is like a, um, a function generator, right? I need some external device that can make pulses and stuff like that. Uh, well, it would be nice to have triangles and um, signs as well, but I hardly ever use it, you know? The only thing I need <coughs> is a square wave 50% duty cycle uh, that I can modulate a little bit in the, in the, in the speed. Um, so something like this, you know, a box like this, but then not with potentiometers, but with pulse trains that I can send out. That would be a very useful tool. I was thinking about that, of doing that today. Um, you know, it's Saturday, it's my day off. Let's see uh, if I can just build it in one day. So, Basically, we have some microcontroller that we can program, that makes sense, right? It also needs power, 5 volts and 0 volts, so that's good. I call it the pulse generator. It's not a <coughs> function generator, because it's too limited for that. So uh, let's call it the pulse generator. Um, then I need to be able to create pulses. So I was thinking, um, this is mandatory, 1 to 10 hertz, 10 to 100, 100 to 1000, 1000 to 10,000. These are the things that are mandatory. And this one's optional, you know, and this also is optional. Um, this one's, I reckon I can do this one, all these ones with just simple firmware and, you know, basically soft, soft generated by software or firmware. But this one is quite fast. I don't know if I can do it in software, so I might have to use um, like a hardware CPP or PWM uh, hardware accelerated pin on the microcontroller to actually get to these kind of numbers. But as I said, it's optional. So first let's go for these ones. I will interface this one and see if, what I can do in the code. So basically, that these are the outputs. I put them through a 1K resistor. So if something's happening here, the pulses will be 5 volts, of course. 5 volts, 0 volts. Uh, I put them through a 1K, so I limit the current and possible you know, problems. So these are basically the outputs. And the, basically, these are the inputs. So you have one input for up, one input for down. And then in 10 steps, it will go from one 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, bomb and then so 10 hertz and if you want more than that you just have to choose the other output and go there. So and all these outputs should work at the same time. 
Well, to build something like this, uh, I of course need some parts. So let me look, let me search if I can find uh, all the parts that I need. Well, I have here some nice experimental uh, board that I can use, some proto board. I think I got this from uh, Frank Wink, the Bink. And um, yeah, he just donated it to me because I did something for him and uh, I can use this, so that's good. Then uh, I need, of course, uh, a microcontroller. Um, I think I can just go with the one that I always use because it's my favorite one. It's the Microchip Pick 18F46K22. I like that one, so let's go for that. So that should be fine. I, of course, need something to make 5 volts. I don't need a lot of amps, so I can just go with a simple one. This one's a budget one, it's a Recom, uh, it's a half amp. Normally they are one amp, but they're way expensive. The half amp is uh, cheaper, so let's go for this. Um, then, of course, I need some capacitors for balancing uh, the, 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 uh, the voltages. So I need to... I need these ones, which are 100 nano uh, ceramic ones to stabilize the voltage for the microcontroller. Maybe I'll put in an extra, uh, somewhat bigger. Let's see what we have. Ooh. 22. Ah, that's not really what I want. Let's see if I've got something better. 220 10 volts. That makes sense to me. Let's go for this one. Uh, of course, um, I need some resistors. Okay, there we go. Uh, what did I say? I needed a 1M. Right. Uh, I needed 1K, definitely. Here I got 1K for the outputs. Oh, I need how many need, do I need? Like two, three, four, five, six. Six of those. There we go. And I think I need a 1M. Let me see if I have it. 1M. There we go. How much do I need? I need two of those. Okay. There we go. And the last thing I need are some switches. Um, let's see. The switches should be here. Oh boy, uh, I've got switches, but that's I think a little bit overkill. I was thinking those micro switches, you know, the little push buttons, but I'm out of th those. I don't have them. Crap. But I do have these ones, which is basically a trim, a pot meter, like a variable resistor. I can use this, I think, for the project. Let's see, I, I mean, it's probably a bit more expensive to go with this one, but since it's a one-day project, I want to finish it today. I'm not looking forward in ordering online and finish it Monday. So let's see if I can use this instead of the two switches. Okay, um, so we have to not do this. This is going to be scrapped from the design. I don't have them on stock, so too bad, boohoo. Let's see what we can do. You can do it like this and then with a lever. That's one way you can do it. So, yeah, there we go. So it's a variable resistor and we just connect it to the ADC. The problem then is how do we know, you know, when you turn it, how, what's the frequency uh, that comes out? I mean, I could use a, a multimeter and hook it up and then have the multimeter telling me the frequency but then I need another device on my desk which I don't want so um, basically it's 10 steps so why don't I use just, just like 10 LEDs like very simple just a resistor and an LED and then this goes to ground very, very simple like this do this 10 times on a row and I can just see how many LEDs are blinking so here we are, I was fiddling with this uh, layout for let's say like 10 minutes and um, well this is the basic layout I came up with. By doing it like this it's acceptable and then the LEDs, I need some LEDs of course. I have here a bucket 
of like trashed LEDs. These are basically new LEDs, but I had to desolder or something. You know, I put them in a project, like a paid project for a customer, and then I, I had the wrong color in or reverse order or something. I just take them out, but I don't put them back. I just throw them in these bin. And basically, they're still good LEDs, but I wouldn't put them in, you know, customer products. So I can use these LEDs, especially when I use them only as indicators and not as really light sources, but just indicator LEDs. So uh, this is basically costless. This is just trash. The microcontroller is two euros fifty or three euros maybe. The board I got for free. This is some leftover part from another project. Well, the caps are like sixteen cents. This is two fifty. So all in all, the whole pro and then some resistors. I mean, come on, that's sense. So the whole project, I can build it under ten bucks, uh, and within a day. So that's pretty cool. While uh, while I was, you know, soldering the whole thing, I figured it wouldn't be a good idea to put it on five volts, but put it on three point three volts. Um, so that would change all this and also this. And the reason for it is uh, very obvious. Uh, if you have other things you want to do, other microcontrollers or whatever, and you're putting out a 5 volt signal while the uh, receiving part is a 3.3 volts um, device, you might uh, damage it. Alright, let me just test the potentiometer. Uh, there we go. 3.3 almost all the way down to almost zero so that's good let's hook it up I'm almost finished with uh, soldering the whole thing uh, let me see if I can give you a sneak peek well, yeah. so I'm done soldering this is the whole unit right now so we got the microcontroller these are the, are the outputs uh, with the resistors and just a simple header so you can connect some external thingies there uh, to send the signals to, here are some LEDs directly to the controller with a 1K resistor in between, so only 3 milliamps are going there. But these are high brightness LEDs, so you'll probably see it too bright anyway. Then we got a little power supply going on here, very simple, just some decoupling there and also on the output decoupling, this is a switched uh, regulator. Then, um, so it doesn't become warm or hot or anything. Then we got the, the programmer right there to obviously program the microcontroller itself. Some decoupling caps there on the micro uh, power supply rail and of course the um, the big pot which we need for uh, setting the, the pulse um, frequency that's the idea I still have to program it so <laughs> uh, this is just the electronics uh, so this is how it looks on the back not too bad I put some hot glue here not to hold the thing together but to uh, have it like an anti-slip you know to get some grip on surfaces so the only thing I need to do now is get down and program the little thingy but I'm pretty happy with the result while putting together the whole electronics I changed a couple of things the first thing I changed or actually added is the 1.65 reference voltage I just uh, accomplished that with a simple voltage divider also I changed from 10 steps to 100 steps because you have more uh, resolution which is uh, nice and I changed um, the time base, uh, first I was talking about frequency and hertz, and now I'm talking about interval. So, uh, these are tiny changes, but uh, make my life a lot easier. So, that will result in this uh, schematic. I did it in Eagle. Um, I will put um, a link below where you can find a, a picture of this uh, schematic. And also a link where you can find the hex file if you want to make uh, the device yourself. So here we can see the device working. It's now saying 2, 0. So that means it's 20. Uh, I put it in the fourth socket, which is milliseconds. So 20 milliseconds results in 50 hertz, uh, which is nice, uh, spot on. So if I go one lower, that's not, uh, then it's 10 times slower. Should, so that results in 5 hertz, uh, spot on. And here it's even uh, slower. 
so it's 0.5 Hz. I don't know if the fluke can detect that. Ah, uh, no, it doesn't like that. But anyway, you have to trust me on that. And even here, it's 10 slower, and here it's 10 faster, so that gives you 500. So um, let's go back to this one. Uh, you can uh, see that if I now uh, turn this and make the milliseconds uh, shorter uh, that the uh, Hertz goes up obviously so that proves that the whole thing is working so even if I go really fast you know like uh, or actually really slow you can see that the Hertz is going down so you can also go the other way and we're about to 1 kilohertz on this uh, output so if I go one lower it should give me like 100 here it should give me 10 it's spot on here it should give me one but I don't think the fluke likes that nope but uh, yeah so how does that look on the scope because we all like scopes right uh, I've got it set now I will set it at 10 milliseconds uh, per division and uh, when I rotate the knob uh, you can see that it's changing so that's very cool exactly as I want so let's say I keep it at, at this and I go one uh, thingy higher so times 10 boom there we are it's time 10 times 10 so that's very nice so now you have more accuracy here more resolution so let's go 10 down again let's go 10 down again well you can see it's very slow I have to dial in with uh, with the scope to, to make it apparent so even here if I rotate the knob you can see you know, pulse 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 and if I go there it's going slower and if I rotate the other way it's going faster so yeah that works so yeah I'm uh, pretty happy with the end result I mean it's a tiny little package just one knob interface, very easy to uh, to set up. Just connect this to your uh, battery power supply or your cir circuit that you want to test. Just plug it in, some headers there. And then um, you select your time base, milliseconds, daisy seconds, seconds, uh, whatever you want. And just put it in your circuit, maybe on the interrupt pin. I don't know what you want to test, but uh, yeah, it's very uh, handy. Uh, and convenience very small cheap it's under 10 bucks it's very robust I mean you can you know uh, yeah I like it